There's a large distribution of fission products that come from fission in a nuclear reactor. Many of these will just simply be radioactive. Some of them actually emit neutrons. And some of them are neutron poisons, like xenon-135. That isotope has a huge cross-section for absorbing neutrons. In other words, it's a neutron poison. It just gobbles up neutrons from the neutron economy that otherwise would be able to be used for fission. And this xenon, it has a half-life of about 14 hours. And so you build up the amount of xenon you have as you turn on a reactor until it comes to equilibrium in a time limit that's around 14 hours. And then you're creating it at around the same rate that you're destroying it. When you turn off the reactor, that xenon, it's still there. It's got about a half-life again of 14 hours. And so it takes a while for it to decay down. So when you turn on the reactor, there's xenon in there that's a poison that wasn't there when you first turned it on. And so that xenon poisoning means that you'll need to add a little more reactivity to the reactor to get it to start if you haven't allowed that xenon to decay away. This was first seen in the initial reactor that was built by Fermi when there was this, this rumor that it would only start when he showed up because he only showed up at the beginning of the day. When they turned it off at the end of the day, you couldn't turn it back on because of the xenon poisoning. But overnight, as the xenon would decay away, it allowed the reactivity to be sufficient that when Fermi came back, you could turn the reactor back on. And that's what xenon poisoning is. It's this neutron poison that's created as a fission product that will decay away, or it can just be gobbled up by having the reactor operating as it absorbs a neutron and so ceases to become a neutron poison after it does that. So I hope that that uh, tickled your curiosity bone and that uh, you have a good day.